Hello and Happy New Year. My name is Carla Blackmar and I'm the current lead for the Caring for Creation team. I wanted to just let everybody know and give people a chance to find out what we've been working on this past year since we identified Caring for Creation as our congregational call. And I've put together some of my, um, some pictures of what we've accomplished this year. Hopefully you can see these. So, um, Caring for Creation, looking ahead to 2021. Here's a picture from actually 2018, I think, um, showing a trash pickup event that we did. So Caring for Creation in a Time of Climate Crisis, or C4C, was chosen as one of our two congregational calls um, early in 2020. And uh, as we determined that would be one of our calls, we started working on what it would look like to build momentum around this area. Uh, and actually, the first thing that I worked on was the creation of a monthly Oxford Sustainability newsletter. And that was a newsletter designed to sort of aggregate all of the different things that are happening with regard to uh, caring for creation, both in our congregation and outside of it, into one place. Um, so that actually began in June of 2020. In October 2020, we formed our Earth Care team with the goal of becoming a Earth Care congregation, uh, which is a designation from the Presbyterian Hunger Pro Program. Um, that basically means that your congregation focuses on caring for creation. So uh, the first step in becoming an Earth Care congregation is forming an Earth Care team. So we did that in October. And um, our goal is to submit our first application to become an Earth Care congregation in February of 2021. Our formalized call to care for creation is new in our church, and here's a picture from the retreat in January. However, it builds on longstanding work um, and an informal call that has long been held by our congregation. Here's a great picture of uh, that same trash pickup day in 2018. We have um, a really great history of engaging um, creation care, animals, uh, nature in our worship practice. Here's some great pictures from the Lenten season of 2019. And we have some wonderful leaders in our congregation who for a long time have brought creation care um, close to our worship and community experience. In 2018 and 2019, Dick Munson began a program called Trees for Life, um, where he worked with our youth to plant seedling acorns and uh, seedling oak trees for distribution to our community, uh, both within our congregation and beyond. So here's actually a 2019 picture, I believe, um, where he's giving away trees to the public. And it was part of um, Pastor Lawrence organized a blessing of the animals for the feast day of St. Francis. So uh, anybody in the community could come celebrate the spirit of St. Francis have their animals blessed and get a tree. He also gave the trees away um, at church. And so here's a great picture of Lola and my son Oren with a baby oak tree, I think. And one of the most wonderful things about the Trees for Life effort is that it's intergenerational. So um, people of all ages get trees, uh, youth were engaged in the planting of acorns and um, I know that lots of different children within our congregation were involved with planting trees um, on their property or someone else's. Beyond that, we also have um, begun to integrate the Caring for Creation message into some of our, what I guess we would think of as our um, eradicating systemic poverty message. And so here is um, a Bread for the World letter writing campaign that I think we did in 2019. And I know that um, I try to make sure that caring for creation and climate change and the exacerbating influence of climate on um, hunger and poverty was part of my message to my elected officials. And so I think we see an opportunity to build that all together. We have so many people who um, are living the call to care for creation in our community. And I think that the bike racks that are often full um, when our church is in, in service worshiping together are a symbol of how many people are really working to reduce their personal fossil fuel use. So this was a particularly full day on the bike rack. Um, and I just think it's such a cool thing that we have so many community members working hard on that. 
We had also talked about in our retreat, the use of the seminary building as a space for outreach and mission. And um, we had some really good things happen in that regard uh, in 2018, 2019 and 2020 before the COVID shutdown. Um, here is the 2018 League of Women Voters Forum on Climate Action. And Dick Munson is speaking about Trees for Life at that meeting. In uh, February of 2020, we hosted an organic gardening workshop in conjunction with the Oxford Farmers Market, uh, led by Craig Harkrider, who's one of our really amazing local farmers. So a great example of how we can be an organizing place for the community <clears throat> and leverage some of the really nice tech resources that we have to advance creation care, uh, both within our community and beyond. I'm also really proud of the work that people have been doing to reduce um, waste and I thought it was really amazing. We had several different fellowship events in the seminary building where volunteers made it possible through their hard work of washing and cleaning and organizing <laughs> to use the dishes that we have there. So here are the, uh, the Staley's um, with a, I think they're making ice cream sundaes and uh, I think at our congregational retreat, we actually drank our coffee with our um, our church china, which was just lovely. So um, I really think all of the volunteers that have been working to make waste reduction a core part of what we do. 2020 uh, was a great year for seeking spiritual connection in the outdoors. In June of 2020, um, we hosted a walk in the woods, which was an outdoor meditative walking experience. Um, and we had, I think, we had great participation, I think like 20 people on a really beautiful day. Um, we had words of prayer from Pastor Lawrence and um, some insights from Dick Munson. And it was just a really nice opportunity to gather at a time when most of us were in lockdown. So um, 2020 was a great year, has been a great year for really seeking that spiritual connection outside of nature. And we had participants of all generations. There was a second walk in the woods that uh, happened, I believe, this October, um, again, hosted by Dick Munson and with the youth group involved. And I think there was everything from trash pickup to um, learning about some of the native, native plants here in Southwest Ohio. Another education thing that we did in the Caring for Creation regard was to co-host an online summer book club with Zero Waste Oxford. And we had great participation from uh, members of our congregation who were participating with college students to discuss um, this book about called Being the Change, which is a climate scientist talking about what types of individual actions he takes um, to help live what he knows we need to do in order to uh, keep our climate habitable. We've been integrating um, this work also into our vacation Bible school. So we did a vacation Bible school lesson on um, some of our local crops and how to make a corn husk doll and um, how to find interesting things to eat out and about in nature in Ohio. We're also integrating uh, caring for creation into our confirmation process for our young people. And so um, the wonderful curriculum that Pastor Mark selected has a unit on um, the proper use of God's creation. And I think this is just such a critical thing for us to be working with our youth uh, as they understand what our faith is about, to understand how critical creation care and stewardship are um, as part of that. Here's a screenshot from our Oxford Sustainability Newsletter, um, which is spearheaded by our church, but does uh, bring in all kinds of sustainability related opportunities and information uh, from our broader area. So I definitely encourage people to sign up for this. So just in terms of, um, you know, to revisit, We've done a newsletter, we've created an earth care team. Thank you to everyone who's on that already. And we are looking forward to submitting an application to become an earth care congregation. As you can see, we've done a lot of really great work that puts us in a great position to become an earth care congregation. Um, our earth care team includes these wonderful folks. Uh, and we have the uh, plans in 2021 to really start implementing some of the priorities that are identified through our earth care congregation application process. The earth care uh, congregation certification is a revolving recertification process. So this will be our first year. If we become an earth care congregation, we will actually need to submit for recertification each year. 
And I think that's a lovely thing because it means that we are constantly setting goals for how we can be better at this and bring it uh, deeper and deeper into the work of our congregation. And I think that matches really nicely with the idea of a congregational call around creation care. So um, we're currently finishing up our assessment of our, of our earth care congregation status. Um, and we will be submitting this application in February. And part of the application is actually setting goals for what we want to accomplish in 2021. So throughout the year, we'll be working toward those goals and then we'll be submitting for recertification in February of 2022. So for anyone who gets questions about what we're doing with this process, just know that um, there's no right or wrong answer. Each one of these things is kind of a snapshot in time and we wish to improve on all of these different areas um, as part of this work. And so just to a quick synopsis of what some of our 21 might, 2021 goals might be, um, they may include assisting and amplifying uh, some of the existing efforts, both the city of Oxford and Miami University to uh, uh, achieve climate commitments. So both our city and our university have goals to reduce their emissions. And so we can be a community uh, partner assisting in realizing that vision. We'd like to continue to build on the Trees for Life program uh, that Dick Munson has begun. It's just a, a great program. And we would like to um, continue to build on the communications and make sure that we're continuing to run this monthly newsletter because right now those clear communications around what we can do, I think are an opportunity area for us and an opportunity to draw people from outside our congregation. Pardon the dog. Anyway, thank you to everyone who has helped advance our caring for creation call this past year and in prior years. <laughs> And I can't wait to see what we do together in 2021. Thank you so much.